So I watched another movie today um, because there's always too many movies. This one, the director is site is goes by the name One Nine, but like as one word, like O N E Nine, because he's a, an artist and like a video artist, I guess. I can't find any more information about this person really. Um, this is their debut film, being Nas. Time is Illmatic. Now, my coworkers were talking a lot about this movie when it came out in 2014. Because uh, they're big Nas fans, and I didn't know anything about him as an artist, so I didn't see the movie. It has a hundred percent, like all the all the reviewers who reviewed it loved it. I didn't know anything, so um, as you well know, it's Black History Month, and I'm trying to watch more films um, by and about Black Americans. So I was like, here we go, I'll watch this. Um, and then I I was thinking, like I showed my mom. Um, that Nina Simone doc, and she didn't know anything about Nina Simone, and after, when it was over, she was like, how did I not know about Nina Simone? And that's sort of how I felt watching this one. Like, I didn't know anything about um, hip-hop or rap, really, uh, as a kid, partly because I did not, I wasn't really allowed to watch MTV, and partly because I grew up in um, the middle of cow country. So I knew a lot about country music. You want to talk about, like, the albums from country musicians that came out in 1994? I can tell you all about that. But, um, you know, so uh, I thought this documentary for, for what it was, which, like, it's not going to go into any of the, like, darker sides of, of Nas's history. And it doesn't actually go much past the release of his debut album. Um, but what it does present is an interesting look at sort of what, uh, what, kind of upbringing brought about this man as an artist and how his life in the projects in Queens really uh, reflected who he became and what he wanted out of life. Um, and his father was a, was a musician. And um, just all the layers of both his family and family history uh, on top of the reality of growing up in the projects in the 80s. And what I thought was interesting was it, it aspects of it reminded me of sort of the realities presented in Just Another Girl on the IRT, mostly because the girl who's the main character in that film is just a little bit younger than Nas actually is. And so you can sort of see how real that film is in watching this and hearing the stories of um, people who actually grew up there. So it's, I find that interesting. Um I, I definitely need to listen to this album now. I like I heard a few songs in the in the documentary, um, but uh, so it was it had its twentieth anniversary when this came out in twenty fourteen. Which, by the way, it's two thousand sixteen, right? So, um, um, the Fuji's album is is twenty right now, and I was listening to Ready or Not like all weekend because it's a really great song. Oh, all these things are turning 20 and it's freaking me out. It's freaking me out. I have five months left and I'm 30. That's freaking me out too. I don't want to think about it. So basically what I'm saying is even though I didn't know anything about Nas as an artist or as a person, uh, I still found this documentary really fascinating and learned quite a bit. Um, there was a bunch of interviews early on when they were sort of talking about the um, – the projects and how they got founded in, in a post-world America. Um, and there were several, like, parts where they talked. I'm trying to find the guy's name so I don't say it wrong. Um, of course, they don't have it listed on IMDb. Oh! There was a professor, and I know he's quite famous, which is why I'm trying to find his name. I recognize him. Um... Of course, now I can't. We're going to find it. We are going to find it. Maybe it's on the official website. Anyways, he, he was talking about sort of how the history of how, um, how the inner cities came. Yeah, 
and I can't find the guy's name. How the inner cities came to be what they are, what they were in the 80s and 90s. And, and it was sort of a fascinating, like, micro history of that. Um, and then it ended with Nas getting, um, there's a fellowship at Harvard now. There's an entire archive of hip-hop history at, at Harvard. And there's a fellowship for artists who work within the hip-hop realm um, named after Nas. That's interesting. I watch this on Showtime anytime. So if you have Showtime anytime, you can watch it. It's probably available for rent on Amazon as well. Um, it's from 2014. It's called Nas Time is Illmatic. And even if you don't know anything about him, it's quite good. And if you do know about him, you'll probably really enjoy this film because you'll be watching a documentary on something that you actually know about. Um, but maybe you didn't know the origin story. I don't know. Um, anyways, I, I liked this. It was good. <laughs>